If you think happy people are happy because they have less problems, you're running down the wrong rabbit hole. My name's Peter Sage. In 30 years of studying why people have effortless happy lives and why other people struggle no matter what's going on, I've discovered that happiness has nothing to do with the problems in your life has everything to do with your relationship to what you perceive to be the problems in your life. Now, one of the first steps to emotional maturity when it comes to being happy is to understand that life is not a comfort-centric experience. So if you think that in order to be happy, I need to be comfortable, you're going to be running east looking for a sunset for a long time. People that are naturally more happier, again, they're not born lucky, they don't have it easier, They've developed a relationship to their problems that understands that life isn't a comfort-centric experience. That's a fool's errand. Instead, life is a growth-centric experience, and we all know growth comes through challenge. So they see the bends in the river of their life as the challenges to overcome so that they can become a better version of themselves. If you're looking at it from the emotionally immature perspective of thinking that everything in life is here to serve you and be comfortable, and if that doesn't fit your pictures, then you're going to be unhappy, then you're going to get feedback from the universe until you start to make your shift. And that feedback shows up as anxiety, as frustration, as depression. You're fighting life, trying to bend it into shape. But what if you could just make one switch? Not the switch to make your partner better, not the switch to make your body better, not the switch to make your bank account better or your boss better. That's the wrong switch. But the switch to make your relationship to what's happening better. Instead of thinking that life is happening to you, what if you think life is happening for you? Instead of saying, oh, I've got to pick the kids up from school, you say, I get to pick the kids up from school. You see it as an opportunity to connect, to live a life where you have the privilege of being able to go pick up your children. A lot of people that are suffering from fertility problems would love to have that as a problem. You see, if we go back 200 years, you want to know what real problems are like? There was a lot of people that died during childbirth. A lot of your ancestors that aren't even here anymore because they give their gift of life away so that you could eventually have yours. And what do we get upset about now? Oh, you know, Starbucks run out of their caramel macchiato. Now, or the fact that, oh, you know, I've got to sit next to somebody who's you know, complaining and moaning all day you know, in the you know, cubicle next door. Quality levels of problems. And if you're trying to perfect the utopia of your life around having no problems, you're going to attract the perfect people to remind you that that just isn't the case. So how do you make that switch? Well, to begin with, it's about asking better questions. Instead of, why is this happening to me? Ask yourself, why would the universe or life pick a label? Put these circumstances in front of me. In terms of who would they want me to become in order to get better to get over this? What is it that I can learn from this rather than focus on what I've lost as a result of this? Yeah, if you have a situation where you lose, you get scammed out of some money in a deal. Let's say it's $1,000. You can turn around and say, oh my God, I've lost $1,000. Or you can say, wow, I just paid $1,000 for a lesson that's going to stop me from losing $10,000 or could have stopped me from losing $10,000. The next time somebody approaches me with this kind of deal, I'm going to be smarter and wiser. You see your failures as your capital, not as some sort of legacy of failure. See, everything is how you look at something. Yeah, if you focus on what's right, because it's always available, you're going to have a different relationship than focusing on what you think is wrong. See, what's wrong is always available as well. If I offered you yeah, $10,000 to come up with the five reasons why your life sucks right now, you would win $10,000. But I offered the same $10,000 to come up with five genuine reasons that you could find that you could be grateful right now. You'd win that $10,000. See, both games are available. The difference between people who are more consistently happy is they choose to play the latter game. They choose to play the game of noticing what's right with their life rather than focusing on what's wrong. It's easy to focus on what's wrong. The media will tell you everything that's wrong with life. Anti-social media will always point out you know, what's wrong with your life. There'll always be an army of stone throwers 
that are looking to rain on your parade. Right? That's just part of their own journey. But if you keep your eyes yeah, looking through the lenses of you being the star of your movie, yeah, Brad Pitt doesn't care about what the film extras think of him and his role. He just focuses on being the best him that he can be in that role. So when it comes to chasing happiness, you can wrestle with life. You can look at what you try to do to fix all of your problems. Or you can shift your perspective to turn around and say, you know something? It's never going to be a smooth ride. Athletes aren't born athletes. They're born in the gym. But the way they look at the workout, the way that they address the pain in their muscles comes from positive anticipation as to who they're becoming as a result, not moaning the fact that it hurts. I'm not trying to say that if you're having a tough time right now, you shouldn't have some level of compassion for yourself. I'm not saying that you know, if you've suffered some level of trauma or stress or significant emotional event, that I'm mitigating the pain that you feel. What I am saying is who you become as a result of your relationship to that determines where your life goes from here. And if you want to play the game of yeah, this is serving me at some level versus I'm a victim and you fast forward 12 months, you have two different lives from this point right now. My question is, which life do you want? Both are available. It's got nothing to do with your intelligence. It's got nothing to do with your history, how bad your trauma was, who your parents were, where you were born, what your circumstances are. It has everything to do with the quality of the question you ask yourself and whether you're going to be empowered by what happens or victimized by it. That choice, my friends, is yours, and I hope you make the right one. If you enjoyed this message, if it resonates with you in any way, then check out the link below to some of my other programs that I want to be able to offer so that this can become a natural and effortless way of automatically thinking. For you to be able to show up in life as the best version of you without having to worry about the old patterns pulling you back down the ladder of your potential. If it's something that you want to aspire to grow into as a natural part of your growth and journey, check out the link below. And I look forward to seeing you in another classroom very soon.